Welcome to the training program for the Panduit Structure Ground Grounding System. This course will take you through the procedures necessary to successfully install Panduit grounding connectors, compression lugs, and bus bars. This video trains on the proper installation of the part number shown on this screen. To facilitate learning, this video is divided up into five parts. The standard, the tool, two sections on buried grounding connectors, and one section on bus bar lugs. IEEE Standard 837-2002 is a test procedure for grounding connectors. Tap and ground rod connectors that meet this performance standard are selected because of the superior corrosion resistance it assures. To achieve performance that meets IEEE Standard 837-2002, it is necessary to follow the installation procedures outlined in this video. The tool used to install the structure ground grounding system is the Panduit CT-2930-L. The tool uses a standard Milwaukee 18-volt lithium-ion battery. To plug the battery into the tool, slide it into the battery adapter until it clicks. To remove the battery, squeeze the red locking tabs and slide the battery off the battery adapter. The amount of charge on the battery is indicated by the number of LEDs that light up when the charge indicator button is pressed. More LEDs indicates that more charge remains. To simplify die selection, dies and connectors are color-coded. Match the color of the marking on the connector with the color dot on the die. Alternatively, the die that crimps the connector has the same die index number as its connector. For your safety, best practice is to always disengage the battery before installing or removing dies. Crimp dies lock onto the tool when installed. To allow the dies, labeled as number 2 in the drawing, to slide into and out of the tool, die locking buttons exist on the right side of the RAM, labeled as number 1, and on the front of the tool, labeled as number 3. To install a die on the stationary side of the tool, align the ridges of the die with the slots on the tool head. Pull the die release button so that the die slides freely. Release the die release button and slide the die back and forth slightly until it locks into place. Installing the die on the moving head, or RAM, is a similar process. Align the die on the tool slides. Depress the die release button so that the die moves freely on the slides. Release the button and move the die back and forth slightly until it locks into place. Replace the battery. The tool is now ready to begin the crimping process. Take the battery out of the tool before removing the dies. Then, pull the die release button on the front of the tool and slide the die off the tool head. To remove the die on the RAM side of the tool, depress the die release button on the right side of the head and slide the die off the tracks. The stationary head is opposite the RAM and does not move during crimping. To crimp a connector, rest the conductor and connector combination against the stationary head of the tool. Squeeze the gray trigger to advance the RAM. When the sound of the motor changes, the crimp is complete. Press the black trigger to release the RAM. The CT2930L has three important features. First, the head of the tool rotates 180 degrees, making it easier to install connectors in space-constrained environments. Second, if at any time during the crimping process, something is not going as it should, depress the black trigger and the RAM will release. Third, if the battery runs out of charge during a crimp, simply replace the battery with one that is charged and finish the crimp. Output tonnage works independent of battery charge, so the tool will not cycle until the full output tonnage is reached. Tap connections are ones where one section of wire is bonded to another, either at their ends or somewhere along the middle. For this demonstration, number 2 AWG solid wire is bonded to number 2 AWG solid wire using the Panduit GCE 1-Ot 1-Ot. There are two parts in each tap connector die set. One die half has a unique locator on it that facilitates the crimping process by helping to ensure the connector is situated properly against the tool during the crimping process. For best results, 
Install the locating die on the stationary head of the tool. It does not matter which side of the stationary head the locator is installed on. Install the other die, that is, the one without the locator, on the RAM side of the tool. To begin the installation, remove the connector from the packaging. Be careful not to disturb the antioxidant that coats the inside of the connector ports. Also, be sure to remove the cable ties from the packaging. Put the conductors in the tab. Put one cable tie in the slot and wrap it around the body of the connector. Put the tail of the cable tie through the head and pull it tight. In most cases, one cable tie is all that is necessary to hold conductors to the connector. The other cable ties provided may be used to provide additional support for the bundle during the crimping process. Use of the additional cable ties is optional and a matter of installer preference. Next, select the crimp dies and install them in the CT2930L tool. The dies are marked with a red indicator dot that matches the color of the writing on the tap and have die index number PG10. Crimping the GCE 1-0-1-0 tap connector is accomplished with a single crimp. Put the bundle connector in the jaw opening. The tap may be inserted with the port opening up or down. The tap is situated properly when it rests against the locator. Pull the gray trigger to advance the ramp. When the tool motor changes pitch, the crimp is complete. Release the ram by depressing the black trigger. Once the ram is released, the connection is complete. This crimping process, known as the traditional crimp process, meets IEEE standard 837-2002 for the GCE 1-0-1-0 connector. To inspect the crimp, Remove the cable tie from the slot, then rotate the crimp so that the rib is visible. Read the die index number. Rotate the tap so the die embossing is visible. The die index number that is embossed on the part should match the number printed on the rib of the connector. The correct die index number for the GCE 1-0-1-0 is PG-10. E-tap connectors can also be used to bond a copper wire to a ground rod. For this demonstration, a number 2 American wire gauge solid wire is bonded to a 5 8 inch ground rod using the Panduit GCE 250-1. To begin, select the dies and install them in the tool. The dies for this process are marked with a black dot and have die index numbers PG25. The process of crimping the ground rod connector begins the same way as crimping the tap did. Insert the conductors in the pockets and bundle them with the cable tie provided. For reference, the conductors that can be used in each pocket are printed on the connector. Here, the ground rod is placed in the larger pocket. To achieve IEEE standard 837-2002 with the GCE 251-OT connector, a special crimp process known as the enhanced crimp process must be used. First, the process will be described generally. Then, a video will follow showing how the enhanced crimp process is accomplished using a number 2 solid wire and a 5 8 inch ground rod. First, the bundle connection will be inserted into the tool until it bumps against the locator and a crimp cycle will be completed. Then, move the tool so that the slot in the connector aligns with the locator on the die. Crimp the part again. This puts the full tonnage of the tool on half of the part, providing additional compression of the connector. Last, move the tool back to the original location on the connector. Seat the connector against the locator and crimp the connector again. 
This last crimp puts the full tonnage of the tool on the other half of the part, providing for a connection that meets the requirements of IEEE Standard 837-2002. The enhanced crimp process is shown here in real time. The first step is the same as the traditional crimp process. Then the tool is moved so that the slot and locator are aligned. The part is crimped, putting the full tonnage of the tool on half of the part. Finally, the tool is moved back to the original position and the part is crimped again, completing the process. To inspect the crimp, read the die index number that is embossed on the connector. The die index number should be embossed on the part two times, and each embossing should match the number printed on the connector's rib. The correct die index number for the GCE 250-1 is PG25. Lug and bus bar connections will be demonstrated with number two solid wire and number six insulated cable. The connector for number two solid copper wire is the LCC 4-14 AW-L lug with gray printing on the barrel. The dies with the gray dot are used to crimp this lug. Lug dies install the same way the ETAP dies do. Press the die release buttons and insert the dies on the slides of each head. Let go of the die release buttons and the dies will lock into place. The dies are interchangeable and may be installed on either head. After the dies are installed, Insert the conductor into the lug barrel until it stops. Rest the lug against the die on the stationary head of the tool. Orient the lug's tongue so that it is perpendicular to the direction of the ram. Press the gray trigger button and let the tool cycle completely. When the tool changes pitch, press the black trigger to reverse the ram. The crimp is complete. The installation of the number 6 AWG lug is similar to that of the number 2 AWG lug. Begin the process by selecting the blue die to match the blue marking on the lug, Panduit part number LCC 6-14 AW-L. Install the dies in the tool. Again, the dies are interchangeable and may be installed on either side of the tool. Strip an inch and an eighth of insulation off the end of the 6AWG cable so that the wire can be inserted all the way to the bottom of the lug's barrel. When removing the insulation, be careful not to nick the conductor strands. Crimp the lug by first inserting the conductor into the barrel until it stops. Crimp the part one time, orienting the lug tongue as before. Put one crimp on the part and release it after the tool cycles fully. The connector installation is now complete. There are three things to inspect a compression lug for. First, if the crimp was applied in the proper orientation, the lug will bolt flat onto the bus bar. If the crimp was rotated, the ears created on the barrel during the crimping process may interfere with the ability of the lug to be bolted flat. The second thing to check for is to ensure that the lug was crimped with the proper die. Verify that the die index number embossed on the lug matches the number that is marked on the lug's barrel. For the number 2 AWG solid wire, the proper die index number is P29. For the number 6 AWG wire, the proper die index number is P24. The last thing to check is known as full wire insertion. A properly installed lug is one where an inspector can peer into the window at the transition between the tongue and the barrel and see conductor inside. If the conductor can be seen, then the lug is said to have full wire insertion and is installed properly. In addition to the training provided in this video, Panduit offers a customizable crimp training class for power connectors and terminals. Participants are instructed on 1. 
the selection of the right terminal or power connector for specific wire sizes and applications, two, selecting the right tool to crimp the terminals and power connectors, and three, how to ensure that the crimp produced will be a UL and CSA approved termination. To find out more, contact your Panduit sales representative or call Panduit customer service at 800-777-3300 and request information on the success depends on the crimp program. If you have questions that were not answered in this video, feel free to contact Panduit Customer Service at 800-777-3300 or by email at cs at panduit.com. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. Please let us know if we may provide any further assistance.